Okay. You can't just start writing equations, right? Everything in geometry needs to be driven by some relationship. Then you set up an equation based on that, then solve based on algebra. So you'll, I know it's early and we just started this on Thursday. So you'll get better at it. Just know that that will be true. If you stick with it and keep doing it, you'll get better at it. But I want you to start thinking about that process that I just said. Go to the geometry relationship first. How does it relate to this? Then set up an equation based on geometry. Then solve with algebra. And maybe we should write that process down, maybe. I'll, I'll think about it. In this case, we have a figure and some names of angles. And we need to know how they relate to each other. So far, we've only learned two things. Two geometry concepts. So... Hopefully you have these out, and if not, you should. Why is it jumpy? There we go. In, in, we've only filled out this first page of geometry. And in there, two-thirds of the page was vocabulary, so that, didn't, that doesn't establish any relationships. Yeah. I know. We talked about it. We did talk about it. I put it on here, so you you need to do that. I'll give you time. Thanks for reminding me. Okay, keep looking. I'm gonna zoom a little now that you're all there. From here, clear to here. That was all just vocabulary and helping us establish some notation, that's all. So then we wrote down this idea of segment addition, which was piece plus piece plus piece equals total. And we didn't write this, I put it on after class, but we did mention it. And that is that the, that the angle addition postulate was the same concept as segment, only for angles. So it's still piece plus piece plus piece, etc. equals the total, right? So, do you want a minute to write this? Should we do that now, or do you want to do it after we do the warm-up? Do it now? Okay. Let me zoom it in a little bit more. I'll talk you through it. Angle addition postulate, AAP, if you want to abbreviate. Uh, if you want to abbreviate that one, you can call it the SAP, so segment addition postulate. We'll do a lot of abbreviating. So it helps to save writing. Guys, this is the same version, like I said, on Thursday. It's just piece plus piece plus piece equals total, but for angles this time. Okay? So a little picture. Um, let me fix this. Instead of a line segment like we had before, this is just some angle. And we have three different angles making up that angle. So do remember your notation, your angle notation. Remember that the little m, I wrote it over here, but the little m means measure of the angle. Again, if you can keep in mind that we like to shorten stuff, most of it makes sense. And by shorten, I mean really abbreviate it down. going to take this because we see angles in the in the figure right now you're going to just know that this is coming where there's going to be lots of angle relationships our whole first unit is called angle relationships this is the first one of many so in here we know 
if we do it in, maybe let's just do it in color so it makes it faster. So I'm going to write an equivalent statement that pink, the pink angle, this is the segment addition postulate in colors. So pink plus blue is green. That's the segment or the angle addition postulate. That's all that is. It's saying piece plus piece gives you the total. Here's one way to, to think about it, and I might have said this to this class. Let's say this is your door. Maybe here's your bedroom. This is your door. Somebody knocks. You want to see who it is, so you open it a little ways. Okay? That's an angle, right? It creates an angle. So you open it to here. Hey, that's a person that I don't mind if they come in. So you open it further. They come in. That's the to two different openings is the total opening, right? I mean, this is very literal and very real world. That's one good thing about geometry. It's easy to visualize. So that is the physical concept. Now we just need to go make this a relationship that we can use to solve. So I see three angles and three expressions given. So let's write an equivalent statement first. Measure of angle, if we're thinking of the door, it would be angle CBD plus, then you open the door further, so plus measure of angle ABC, and that equaled the total opening, which was the measure of angle ABD. Okay? Are we following on the geometry concept? Okay. By the way, that is the end of the geometry. We have used it to establish a relationship. Now we go switch into algebra mode, which means, hey, let's substitute what the algebra is for these and solve. Okay? So it, we were told a measure of angle CBD is negative 3x minus 5. So that was this one. We were told measure of angle, I wrote this one wrong, sorry. No, I didn't, it, it's good. Measure of angle ABC is 3x squared plus 2x. And the measure of angle ABD, we were told, is 2x squared plus 1. Okay? Do you see that we are out of geometry mode now? And it's algebra. So we need to solve, we need to use algebra to solve. I think it's probably worth even noting that like this part was geometry and this part is algebra. Okay, so we have this quadratic. How do we know it's a quadratic? It has squares. The highest power of x is squared, so that means quadratic. Okay, if you're struggling with that, at least let me show you where to look for help. So we're on, this is huge, back that off a little. On the back of your yellow packet, we had factoring about quadratic stuff, but we also had solving, okay? We can't square root, this is way too busy for that. So solve by factoring. Okay, well, what does that look like in this case? So it says make sure it's set equal to zero by collecting like terms on one side. So we need to go do that. We have terms all over the place. <coughs> Keep x squared positive, otherwise you're making your life more difficult. So instead of bringing everything right or left, let's just think of keeping x squared positive, which means subtract that x squared over to this side. Okay? Also, I'm going to subtract this 1, and it has to come off of this 5. Okay? So I'm doing two things at once. If that's not okay with you, it's okay to separate it out. Also, ask me if you need me to explain it further. So, those cancel and the 1's cancel on the right. So that means this is going to be equal to 0. 3x squared minus 2x squared is x squared. Okay? 
negative 5 minus 1 <coughs> is negative 6. And then I can combine these x's. Negative 3x plus 2x is x. Okay? So I kind of did two steps, which was combine like terms, and in that process set it equal to 0. Everybody okay with that? Yeah. Would it be negative x since it's negative 3x? Plus? It would, yes, thank you. Now, if we go back to the note, if there's no GCF, nope. If all three <coughs> terms are present, we're going to use star. So we need to go factor this. You can use star, you don't have to because it's the a value. Remember, a is out front of x squared, it's 1. So you don't have to use star on this one, but you can. So let's go ahead and use it. So a is 1, b is negative 1, c is negative 6. So I need factors of negative 6 that add up to positive 1. a is 1. What factors of negative 6 add up to negative 1? Okay. Negative 3 and positive 2. Because a is 1, neither of these reduce. So we have our two binomials. So we have x minus 3 times x plus 2 still equal to 0. Okay? And then let's go back to the notes. I'll come back here in a second. So set, we have done the star and we're factored. Set each factor equal to 0 and solve for x. Set each factor equal to 0 and solve for x. So that looks like this. That factor and that factor need to be set equal to 0. So we're sort of splitting it up. Well, that one will become 3 to, be, to make that 0. And this will become negative 2. When you solve, just subtract 2, add 3. So there are two solutions to the algebra part. We're not doing an algebra problem, are we? It feels like it, but we're not doing an algebra problem. We're doing a geometry problem. So what do we need to do with those? You guys remember what I told you? We need to go see if those actually work with the geometry, okay? So maybe write, check, give me some room here, check these in the geometry. Well, what do I mean by check them in the geometry? So if we go back to the original problem, we need to see if those answers make these angles realistic. That's what I mean. We can't have unrealistic answers. Okay? Which of these two do you think will be wrong? If there is one, which one does your gut tell you? Negative two. Okay, let's go check. Basically, the way we do that is start plugging it in and you, you just plug it into each of these and see if the answers make sense, okay? Um, doesn't necessarily matter. I would probably start with the total though, okay? Because if it doesn't work in the total, then we don't care about the pieces. So I'm gonna pull this statement down where our answers are and we'll check it, okay? So 2x squared plus one, I'm going to write check in the total. So measure of angle ABD equals 2x squared. You guys said you figured negative 2 was the bad one. You don't know what bad means yet, but it's your gut telling you that. So let's go see. What is negative 2 squared? What does squared mean? 2 times 2. Times itself. What's negative 2 times negative 2? 
Four. Let me write that in green. Okay, what's two times four? Eight plus one? Nine. Okay, is there anything inherently or mathematically wrong with nine? No. No. So let's go check the other one. Okay, so let's check three. Uh, let's do purple maybe, I don't know. So check x equals three. Well, uh, so two times three squared plus one. Okay, what is three squared? Nine times two plus one. Is there anything inherently wrong with that? Okay, so far so good, right? Now let's go check a piece. How about this piece? Okay, so check angle CBD. Uh, negative 3x minus 5. Check measure of angle, that was CBD. Come on board. Negative 3x. What was it? Scroll. At least you guys don't have to scroll. Super annoying. Okay, negative 3x minus 5. This one's easier to check because there's no squared. And I'm going to show it a little bit quicker. So we're going to plug in negative 2, and then we're going to plug in positive 3. So negative 3 and minus 5. Negative 3 and minus 5. Okay, what's negative 3 times negative 2? 6 minus 5? 1. Negative 3 times positive 3? Negative 9 minus 5? Is negative 14. Okay, that seems like an issue, doesn't it? Can you have a negative angle? Okay, so we're going to cut that is no good, right? You can't have a negative angle. We don't want to say that. So, now, I'm not saying that there aren't negative angles, but in this picture, it makes no sense, okay? That's like down the road in trig. You can de deal with that. So, we have, three doesn't work. Even though it works algebraically, like we didn't make a mistake solving for the three, when we plug it back into opening our door, it makes no sense. So we have to kick it out. That's what it means to check in geometry, okay? Make sure that it works, <coughs> that it doesn't make something make no sense. How do you feel about that? It's a lot, right? So think through what we did. We went geometry world, established a relationship, algebra world to solve, back to geometry world to check if it makes sense. And that will get pretty routine over time. If you didn't get all the way through that, that's okay. This was kind of your first exposure to it. I do want to know how many of you solved and got x equals 3 and negative 2. So raise your hand if you got to that point. Okay? So, you? How many of you got hung up here? on understanding the angle relationship. Be honest, it's okay. How many of you got stuck there? Okay, so we're gonna get better at that. How about the homework? How did it go? Pretty good. Are there any problems from it that you would like me to do, to check with you? Yeah, okay. Uh, Let me pull it up. You, you can still ask about it, that's okay. Uh, could you go over number 21? 21? Yes. Yep.
All right, so we're finding the length of a segment. Remember, a segment should have just a line above it with no arrows on it. So EF, somewhere between that two, those two little dots. Sorry, it says EH, not EF. So E is negative 1 and a third, and H is 3 and a half. We wrote down on Friday, sorry, Thursday, we wrote down to use absolute value differences, right? So, uh, I think, give me a second to pull this in. That way we don't have to have all this other stuff around it. So basically we're doing this. Second number, if you want to call it that, minus first number. So it's three and a half minus negative one and a third absolute value. Why absolute value? It's a distance, yeah. Distances aren't negative, right? We can't have a negative distance. So really, I'm, I'm guessing that you're asking about the fractions, right? Number one, it's really a pain to deal with mixed numbers. So let's turn these into improper's. Remember you multiply and then add. If you haven't done this in a while, two times three plus one. Okay, so this becomes seven halves. And then same thing over here, three times one plus one. So four thirds, make sure you keep the signs in there. Okay, what's a good common denominator for 2 and 3? 6. So we need to multiply both of these appropriately to get 6. What do I need to multiply this 2 by? By 3. Why am I multiplying the numerator also? Like, if we only care about a common denominator, why did I put a times 3 on the top? Yeah. Yeah, it's because 3 over 3 is 1. I'm not changing the value. So this becomes 21 sixth. Okay, what do you need to multiply the second fraction by to get it to 6? Two. 2. So we're going to go times 2 times 2, and we're going to get 8 sixth. Okay, now we just need to subtract the numerators. Don't subtract denominators. That would, that's not okay. So 21 minus negative 8 is what? 29 sixths. And I'm okay if you just leave it as that. That's okay. That's technically an answer. And that, that's the one that the answer guide would give you. If somebody did this, did anybody do this as a decimal? Okay. It's roughly... 4.82 or so, somewhere in that ballpark. Would the bump of fraction be 4 and 5 sixths? If you did do it as a mixed number, which I don't recommend in math class. Unless you're measuring something. Okay, any others? Okay, let me give you answers to this then. Um, why do I ever double click? So grab your sheets if you did it, and here come those. So we did 21 to 28. We just checked 21. 22, x equals 3. 23, ab equals 10. 24, bd equals 14. 25, CE equals 17. 26, the measure of angles QOR is 35 degrees. 27, the measure of angle POS is 65 degrees. Twenty-eight, measure of angle ROS is 13 degrees. Before I scroll, do we need to do those, any of those twice? Okay. 
40 is 96. You should have chosen E. Okay. Guys, you've got to stay on top of your homework. Those of you who are doing it, good job. You'll get better at this geometry stuff. But if you haven't done your homework, you're going to get behind and you're going to struggle. Could you go over 40? Yeah, let's do 40. 40 real quick. Okay. So point C is in the interior of angle ABD. Again, this, this kind of problem comes up a lot where you have to draw the picture. Geometry is visual. Draw pictures. Try not to do problems without them. So here's how I would do this, and yours might look different, but it's angle A. Remember the vertex is always the middle letter, so A, B, D. It says point C is in the interior. So there's point C. Now we'll keep reading. Angle A, B, C. Oh, that must mean it's connected here, right? Otherwise I wouldn't have an angle A, B, C. So I need to connect a dot, connect a line. Okay, this is what we're talking about today. If you struggled on this problem, that was okay, because that, that notation is new, probably for everybody. That notation says congruent, and we're going to write this in your notes so you don't need to write it down right now. But what does congruent mean? My other class had heard that word before. Do you guys, have you heard it before? Jennifer? It's like the geometry version of equal. Yeah, so they're the same. Basically, that tells us that if ABC, ABC is, and I want you to do this where you put the information in the picture because it will help you, okay? So if this angle is that size and CBD is 4X and we know they're the same, what can I do with those two expressions? Yeah, so we're, we're solving this equation. That's all. So how did we get rid of fractions? And all, our fra and all our solving work, how did we get rid of them? Well, we multiplied by the denominator. Okay? Uh, those of you who didn't do this homework, if you're just like tuned out and zoned out, you're missing, right? Make sure you're still with me. It's right here. I know. I'll get it for you in a minute. Yep. 2 times 5x over 2 plus 2 times 18 equals 8x. I just distribute. So get rid of fractions. What happens to these 2s? Yeah. So it's just solving this equation for x. Okay, skipping some steps there, but that gets you x to be 12. Then you plug it back in, okay? And then you'll find that this is 48, that's 48, and the total is 96. Okay. So again, guys, the algebra part is now not the focus. That was the focus before, but now it's the geometry. We just use algebra to solve little things as part of this. How do you feel? Okay? Don't let this stuff snowball on you. Okay? What I mean by that is, if you're struggling today, I should see you tomorrow at lunch. Because by Thursday, we're learning something new. Today, we're learning something new. And pretty soon, you have this giant snowball that's just going to roll over you. Don't do that. Okay? It's worth giving up a lunch, or even part of a lunch, to stay on top of things. And I'm fine if you want to bring your lunch in here and just eat it. It's not like you have to skip eating. Please don't do that. Do you feel like you need another little problem with angles? Do we need to practice or are we good to move on? I mean, it's not like you won't see it again. But I do want to talk about congruence and notation. So on your yellow sheet, grab it please. 
And we're on page two. So right at the top, congruent. Lots of stars. That's because congruent and focusing on what that means and how to prove it is going to be a big focus for us. Okay? So the things you're about to talk about and, and write down in your notes are really important. Make sure you're really focused. We're also going to learn about the notation. So here's the definition. So it means two things. It means the exact same shape and same size. So people want to make this be equals, but it's not exactly that. Can you put your phone away? Like you're addicted. Put it away, like in your pocket. Thanks. It is not. It's the geometry version of equals, but it goes beyond that. Okay. Here's what I'm going to give you as an example. Algebra, the idea of equals would be like if Omar and Dylan have, both have $10. Who cares how? Maybe he has two fives, but he has ten ones. They have equal amounts of money. Okay. Geometry, the idea of congruent is like my Chromebook is exactly the same size as yours. It has the same width, the same depth, same height, same, the keys are the same size. That's the idea of congruence, okay? It's not equal, but exactly the same shape and size. To the extent that that is equal, that's what it means. Okay, the notation for this, so maybe just make a little arrow. We just saw this a second ago, but it's an equal sign with the tilde above it. That means congruent. You will use that symbol a whole, whole bunch. So you'll get to know it if you feel like you're not quite. Okay. So this, like we saw in problem 40, could tell us that two angles are congruent. It could tell us that two whole figures, like two triangles, are congruent. Okay? You'll notice in this that we also break it down into showing congruent pieces of things. So for segments, we use tick marks. <coughs> and in the word part, we use the symbol for congruent. So if you were given in a statement AB is congruent to CD, this is how you would draw it, or this is how you would see it in a picture. And then we increase the tick marks for segments that are in the same figure that need to be shown as congruent. Okay. Angles, instead of using tick marks, we use arc marks. So inside an angle, you put like a, a little semicircle arc, and it shows the same thing. Have you guys seen this before? Okay. I'm going to give you some practice problems in a second on it. Come grab this on your way. Good luck. You too. Back here. Start writing about that. To show segments are congruent. I'm going to start using these symbols in the writing. So I don't have to write and you don't have to write so much. If that doesn't say congruent to you, you should write the word. To show segments are congruent, use tick marks. the same number of tick marks are all congruent. Okay. Good. 
So make some kind of sketch, it doesn't have to be this one. And start marking some pieces. That would show that this, the two t segments with one tick mark are congruent, the two segments with two tick marks are congruent, etc. Make sense? Okay. I kind of drew those too big, so maybe I'm going to go over here to show angles are congruent. Use, it should have a comma, use arc marks. Okay, maybe these two angles are congruent in these triangles, maybe those two are. So we use arc marks to show that. So I'm going to let you put this into use here in a second. We are adding more notation and more information, which means we're now needing to use segment addition, angle addition, and congruence. So we're adding layers to our geometry. Everybody got what they need? Speak up if you don't. Wait for you, okay. All of this helps us to save writing. It's nice. You will have to write less because of it. Are you good? Okay. All right. So give this, give these two problems a shot. They're, they're really easy once you let your eyes orient to what it's telling you. So maybe two minutes. Talk to somebody while you're doing it. Okay, talk to somebody. Tell me, tell them about it. Have a good day. You too, good luck. Thank you.
And yeah, so let's get into these. And again, it's just something that takes a little time to get the hang of, and then you'll start really liking this. Because congruent means copy-paste, essentially. Here's what he was just saying, what Jacob said. Because these two angles have arc marks, we know this is also 32. So we can just copy-paste. And now we have more information in the figure. And it tells us that XWZ, so the whole thing, is 127. So now you notice that we're going to use the angle addition postulate and congruence to solve for the missing angle. In case you're curious, we're solving for that one. So we need to write an equivalent statement using geometry, which is piece, right? I'm writing this informally first. Piece plus piece, etc., equals total. Well, we have 32, that's one piece. 32, that's one piece. The measure of angle YWV, that middle piece, we don't know, but we, we need to write that in there as our variable. And that's supposed to equal 127, the total. Okay? So now we just solve for our variable. If you don't like all those letters as your unknown, make it be an X. Like, it could just as easily just be X, right? And this could say 32 plus 32 plus X equals 127. It's technically better to use the angle name, but not necessary. Anyway, from here we have 64. This is an easy algebraic one. 64 plus x equals 127. And then how do you solve for x? Just subtract. Yeah, I should probably show that. So 63 degrees. And then... Technically, we need to say that, that that's the measure of angle Y, W, V. But for now, again, I don't want you to be overwhelmed by notation. So how'd that one go? Awesome. Okay. Down here, HF, this one could have taken you like five seconds. Anybody get there that quick? Awesome. Good job. HF, so HF is this whole segment. We know nothing about it other than these red lines, right? But what does this red line tell you? Or these two red lines tell you here? That that's 11 centimeters. And this one red line tells us that this is 8 centimeters by congruence notation. So HF technically should have a bar above it is 19 centimeters. Okay? All right, let's extend this just a bit. So I'll probably need to zoom in. Huh? Okay, there we go. Go ahead and look at those for a minute. Okay, the more information that you can put on the picture, the better. Okay, get used to doing that. Please don't be lazy. Put 31 in here. And measure of angle NOP is 31. It says the whole angle, so NOQ, the whole thing is 114. So that whole 
thing is 114. This is how I like to show that. If you like showing it a different way, be consistent so that you know what your notation means for yourself. Okay, what is about those two little red marks? What does that tell you? They're congruent. And so we're solving for, it says ROQ, which is this one. So maybe put an X there, but you can copy that X there because they're the same. Okay, now we're looking at a picture with three pieces that add up to a total. So it looks like this. 31 plus X plus X equals 114. We are done with geometry as soon as we write that, with the geometry part. So 31 plus 2X, and then we just solve like normal. So 2X is 83, and divide by 2. So X is 41.5, and 41.5 is the measure of angle ROQ. So switch it to degrees. That's where you should end up, right? We weren't asked to find X, we were asked to find the measure of angle ROQ. Angles are measured mostly in degrees. As you move through math, you'll learn about radians, but we're not studying radians. Right? Down here, this time we were told a perimeter what does that mean? Around the outside. Good. So if we know the whole perimeter, that's going to help us figure out this piece, which is then congruent to the one that we're asked for. Do you guys see how this is kind of like puzzles? It's like, hey, I know this. How can I weasel my way over to knowing this, right? So if you like puzzles, geometry is like that. It says CD is 11.5, go put it on your picture. DE is 5.3, go put that on your picture. Okay, now we can add around. We know that this is 11, we know this is 8, and that's 8. So this becomes like a big ugly equation, only because there's lots of numbers, not because it's hard. I'm starting at the star, and I'm going to go clockwise. So I see 11 plus AB, that's the side where we need first, plus 8, plus 11.5, I've got kind of missing, sorry, plus 5.3, plus 8, plus 8, plus 11, equals the total, which was 73.8. Okay? Solve that for AB. How do you do that? You add a whole bunch of stuff together, right? Well, I have 11 and 8. That makes 19 plus 11.5 is 30.5. 35.8, 43.8, 61.8, 72.8. I think I did something wrong. Did you say 62.8, right? Whoever said that to me? Yeah? I'm relying on your calculator ability. Okay, if we did all the adding correctly, that's what we got. If not, you still get the point. So I'll check it in a second. I want to check, though, are there any questions so far? Why do I say so far? Are we done? No, because we are looking for GE, but it's the same as AB. So it's, we essentially found GE also. Yeah. Well, why would you put GE in that two? I could have. Oh, you mean in as a separate piece? Okay. Guys, don't put GE into this equation because GE is not part of the perimeter. You could substitute GE here for AB. That's okay. But don't, don't put it in instead. Or also, rather. Okay, questions on that one? Okay, we're done with that stuff. Let's go talk about mid-segments and bisectors.
Bisectors. This is a short little section we're doing out of 1.2. And we'll be able to squeeze it in so you have time to do it before next class. What does bi mean? Two. Uh, two. two. And sect, you can kind of think of pieces like bisectional, bisect. So this is, this word tells you we're cutting stuff in half. That's really what it means. Nice? It's good when words make sense. So grab your yellow sheet. Make this word big. And underneath, put congruent. So we're cutting something into two congruent or equal pieces or parts. Okay? A bisector is whatever does the cutting. You guys ever cut your sandwich in half? The knife would be the bisector. Okay? Kind of idea. It's whatever does the splitting. So a bisector, we can just say cuts. It's like the verb part. Cuts into equal or congruent parts. Okay, we're going to learn two different specific ones. Actually, we might add a third called a segment bisector, but we'll see if we need to. So before we even look at this, what do you think an angle bisector is? Like, just don't think it's too hard. It's pretty, pretty clear. Say it again. Yeah, it cuts an angle into two equal parts. So what are we going to call those two angles then? If they are equal in geometry, what do we call them? Congruent. Okay? Congruent. So, try using this symbol. So it cuts an angle into congruent angles. Draw you a little sketch. Some angle. And I, if you're using different color, which I think is really helpful, especially in geometry, put that middle one as a different color. This would be the bisector. What else do we need to add to our picture? If I know that's an angle bisector, what else do you need to add to the picture? Arc marks. Yeah, good job. So we need to put in here that this angle and that angle are congruent. So you can do two, you can do one. I will do both at various times. Because we only have two angles, you don't need more than that. So those two angles now are congruent. If we put some letters on this, we can name them. So A, B, C, D. Somebody give me the congruent statement. I want names of angles that are congruent. So, Pete, do you feel like you could do that? Fill out our congruent statement for the angles in that picture by, by angle name. Perfect. Just remember, angles are named with the vertex in the middle. Otherwise, you can go either order. So you can imagine that this will set up some algebra. You'll have to write relationships and solve. It's a very repetitive concept, just different, ma uh, different ways of doing it. So let's go look at some. I'm going to come back to these. There's one. If you'd like to write this in your notebook as an example, I'll give you a second to draw it down. So notice we just have we have a picture, but these problems can come without one. 
It could just give you angle names and say this is an angle bisector. So be prepared to do it both ways. So SV, that's ray SV, bisects angle RST, and it wants us to solve for X. And then we'll talk about that last part when we're done. Well, what do we know about the angles in angle RST? And well, what do we know about those? What do we know about the angles that make up RST? Aiden, how about you? Guys, come on, look at what we just wrote down. That's a bisector of an angle. So what is that line doing? Bisect means what? Cut into two equal parts. Well, what are the two parts that are equal? <laughs> RSV and VST. So what do we do with those two components? If they're equal, set them equal. Right? Are we using angle addition postulate? Are we adding two pieces to get a total? Nope. We're not. Do you see how now we have another tool? A huge part of geometry is realizing which tool to use. That's, that's the, like we're not using angle addition now. We're using piece equals piece. That's a different relationship. Okay? I can tell you if this part that I'm doing right now is a struggle for you at this point, you're way behind and you need to come get help if this part is a struggle. Okay. That's not what the question asked for only, right? We did part of it. What else does it want to know? Diego, how about you? What else does it want to know? Read it, please. I'll wait. I'll go back in. Good job. Exactly. It wants to know VST, so plug it back in at 3x plus 4. So we got to take 3, plug in 9, and add 4. If I could get this board to cooperate, there we go. Okay, so 3 times 9 plus 4, that's just 31. And now we can call it degrees because we actually found an angle. Don't call it degrees before that. Okay. These can go quadratic too, these aren't, but I could give you quadratic ones in this just as easily. Um, let's do a more challenging one. A little. Yeah, let's do this one. And I know it's small, so I'll zoom. Put stuff on your picture. So ABC, the whole thing is 4x plus 16. CBX is 3x plus 6. But it did say it, up here to assume that it's an angle bisector. So what can you do with 3x plus 6? Copy it right there. Okay? If it's a bisector, those two angles are congruent. So now we have to use the angle addition postulate. Because we were given a total, so we need to know how to make the total, there's our equation. Right? Piece plus piece equals total, so we get 6x. Uh, I should have written that as a 6, not a 3. 
6x plus 12, and now solving like usual. So this gets pretty routine after a while. Now we get 2x equals 4, and divide by 2. This time it just asks us to solve for x. So you don't have to plug it back in, okay? All right, guys, we can do the same exact concept with, with segment bisectors. So you can just assume that it's cutting a segment or a piece in half. So with that said, let's see if you can figure this one out. This one does not involve any, you probably don't need to write it down. So you can feel free to just think about it or talk with somebody. Read carefully though, I will give you that caution. Oh, also, each of these are separate problems. They don't build, and they don't all go together. It's like A is completely separate from C, etc. Are you there? What? Are you there? Do you have a question? I'm just asking. Okay. R is like the... R is the middle point, yeah. Guys, R is the middle point. Yes. HR has to be 24. We're not done, so don't get it. Okay, if TR is 16, what is AT? That's the whole line, right? So if TR is 16, what is AR? And what's the whole line? Okay, remember I said these are separate, so if MH, the whole thing, is 58, what is MR? 29. Good. Half. So we didn't get too far into that, but I think you'll be okay to do this for Wednesday. Have it, yes, the whole thing. Have it uploaded by then.